Joining us from Hyderabad, Sayyid Akbaruddin, India's former permanent representative to the United Nations, also someone who has served as a spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs as well as India's representative at the IAEA. Sayyid Akbaruddin, welcome to Gravitas again. Good evening, Palki. It's going down to the wire. Uh, all the pundits who predicted a Biden win in, in, in the run-up to this election are now more measured in their commentary. Your thoughts on which way this is going, sir? So, um, I think we are at a critical moment for U.S. democracy. Uh, when we discussed this uh, yesterday, the outcome was uncertain. So, there was anxiety and concern. Today, despite a record number of votes having been cast, we are still awaiting the outcome of who will be the next president of the United States. Now, the outcome of the process so far is basically a reflection of the divided polity that the United States is. The voting starkly actually indicates the differences that we've seen in the entire election process itself. There are divisions between the preferences of uh, rural and urban voters, between men and women voters, between college graduates and others, and between white and non-white voters. So this is a split that has plagued all issues. So it's not surprising that the electoral outcome also is reflecting that, despite two thirds of the voters having exercised their franchise, which is perhaps a record in recent times. Uh, that increased number has not bridged the divide. In fact, the red states have got redder and the blue states seems to have become a little bit more deeper blue. There are some, of course, exceptions, but the bigger picture remains the same. So what does this actually mean for U.S. democracy? Um, it does not augur well uh, because it is likely to put into question the legitimacy of the election process itself. For example, if President Trump wins, uh, he would for a second time have won through the electoral college mechanism despite losing the popular vote. If Vice President Biden wins, he will have difficulty because the Senate is most likely to be uh, what it was in its last version. Um, there is also talk of judicial scrutiny and intervention. Now, no democracy or democratic decision uh, should come to an end through a um, judicial process and because that's a suboptimal outcome. Uh, these are usually political processes and they need to uh, be resolved politically. But alas, the divergence is such that we can't expect um, political outcome um, between the two protagonists. So we are not in a good place. We are in a place of a suboptimal outcome likely. And it's a place where there's no happy ending that is going to come through this process, except if the small pathways that are available are allowed to be navigated. But it doesn't look like that. So to sum up, the situation is difficult and perhaps even critical for U.S. democracy. Indeed it is. And if it goes this way, whoever wins, uh, the losing side will be American democracy. Both candidates have suggested that they're winning and both have suggested that they might move court in the event that they lose. It could be weeks, uh, would you say, before we have a result and these weeks could be marred by more violence. Tonight we've seen four stabbings in Washington. Um, I, I don't know whether uh, they will be marred by violence or not. But a contested outcome will not, to lead, not, will not lead to a satisfactory outcome. Um, it's clear 
that a judicial process will take its time. Um, there are certain time frames put into the election process. There is still is time for those uh, uh, scheduled timelines to be met. Uh, it could be a longer uh, time frame than we are hoping for, but it's not a process that anybody would like to traverse, but perhaps it's all trending towards, the trajectory is trending towards that, whether anyone likes it or doesn't. We'll, we'll have to, of course, see where this goes. How do you think the world is, is looking at, at this election and uh, America has, has prided itself in being uh, the world's oldest democracy, perhaps the most mature in which institutions have, have held, uh, irrespective of who's been in power and what, what sort of a crisis presents itself. Uh, do you think that it may be losing that, that sheen? Well, um, the U.S. has always prided itself of having an allure of being the leader of the democratic world or the free world, as they call it. Uh, that certainly uh, is under stress. Uh, how they navigate the current crisis will only uh, provide us evidence of whether these were minor blips or are much more difficult transitions to make. Uh, clearly, uh, everybody is focused because what happens in the U.S. is uh, has implications for everyone because the U.S. has the ability to influence global decision making for good or for or otherwise. Indeed. Uh Mr. Akbaruddin, thanks very much uh, for joining us. And if it goes this way, Kanye West may come out as the most mature of the contenders. He's gracefully conceded defeat already. And we hope whoever loses concedes as well. And it doesn't come to a long-drawn court battle, but we can only hope. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you for watching Gravitas on Rion's YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening around the world, then subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like and share. Thank you very much for watching. We on World is One.